Growing up, one of the favorite things I would do with my mother was to watch a British sitcom called, called Keeping Up Appearances. It was about this perfectionist British housewife. Everything had to be perfect all the time, and her family was anything but. It was really funny and really entertaining. Anyway, one episode I was watching with my mother was about about, about Hyacinth, who was, main, who was the main character's niece's christening. So I remember being like six, seven years old, asked my mom, Mom, what's the christening? And she told me, oh, that's when they baptize the baby. And I thought, you know, matter of factly, yeah, babies get baptized. I remember be believing at a very young age. Uh, so, and so I so I thought nothing of it. Yeah, it makes perfect sense to me. So I remember asking my mother, oh, Mom, why did we, when did I, when was I get ba baptized as a baby? Like, ha like uh, what was it like? She said, oh, you weren't baptized. What? I was absolutely shocked and furious and said, Oh no, we wanted to wait for you to your older to make the decision for yourself. I said, no, let the little children come unto me. And I got stor I stormed out of the house. Uh, outside, there was a little hose and a little river I, I made with a hose on the front lawn. I took a little, uh, one of those little, a little, one of the little buckets I had to like move water around. I took it, filled it with water, poured the water over my head and said, I baptize myself in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. There, baptized. Now I know about now, uh, that self-immersion from a traditional Catholic standpoint, is not valid. That being said, it does bring up a good question, both biblically and on, based on church history. Can babies be baptized? So, essentially, the entire belie believer's baptisms, that will be the position that says that infants cannot be baptized, near as I can tell, uh, which is held by groups like Baptist, Pentecostals, various evangelical groups today, hangs on this one verse. Quote, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be condemned. Mark 16, 16. Here is the thing. All it says, all the verse is saying, is that both faith and baptism are both necessary to salvation it does not say that one is a is an absolute prerequisite for the other certainly in an adult you would definitely want both to go together uh if you're an adult and you're not and you're not validly baptized and refuse to get baptized okay you believe and you're just rejecting a positive commandment of god to get baptized uh and if you are baptized and don't believe as an adult you're either an apostate or a heretic in which case well, that's a video for another day. But you are not saved in that case. <laughs> um, that being said, th there are cases where, where people can go without baptism, have faith, and be saved. And, and, and furthermore, faith here is not being held as a prerequisite or requirement for the validity of a baptism at all uh, in this case. Now, philosophically, we would argue that adults, traditional Catholics would argue that as adults, for, that, that for an adult to be validly baptized, they do, you need their consent, at least for an adult. That being said, traditional Catholics also have this saying in the fundamentals of Catholic dogma, that for an adult, you need it to be, you need it to be valid. You need their consent for baptism to be valid. The reason is you're taking away sins that they consented to. So you neither consent to take it away. In the case of an infant, all they have is original sin. And in that case, they did not consent to that sin, so you can take it away without their consent, would be how Catholics would understand it. That being said, just looking at this verse, it is saying nothing about what the pre about the prerequisites for the a valid baptism actually are. And indeed, it is based off of an unbiblical notion what baptism is. So in my one of my other videos on baptism of regeneration, I talked about, okay, you know, a lot of Bap Protestants seem to think that it's just a welcoming ceremony, an outward expression of faith in Jesus. That is not what baptism says. In First Peter, it says, quote, baptism saves you. Romans 6, 3. Then when you go down into water baptism, you come up again and you are redeemed. Now, this and, and that and so and that's what saves you. That is in Romans. The question here is whether or not this salvic water should be given to infants. Now, 
something I always find interesting about uh, but and I'm I'm about to go into a, in a little bit. I'll go, we'll go into the exact verses for um that that at least hint in the Bible that yes we should have infant baptism. But I just want to point out one illogical inconsistency before we go forward is because it is relevant. A lot of the people who are arguing that infants cannot be baptized because they cannot have faith will then also automatically say that, oh, infants are automatically saved anyway. Okay, you're obviously ignoring the principle of original sin in Psalm 50, in Psalm 50, 51, 50 in Catholic Bibles, 51 in Protestant Bibles. It says we are born and conceived in iniquities. Okay, you're ignoring that Bible verse there, but even if granting it, you're, assume, you're right. That is the first thing I want to point out. Uh, that's problematic with that Bible verse. If infants are already saved, as per that theory, okay, then they have faith, presumably. I remember believing at a very young age. I remember praying, praying for my mother when I was like nine months old. Okay, yeah. yeah. Nine, yes, I'm saying nine months. I did not misspeak. Uh, apparently, I freaked out my mother when I told her. I remember praying her, praying with her. I remember uh, there was a bombing going on in Iraq. Uh, I remember her praying with me, and I asked my mom, Mom, I remember you holding me arms and us praying together about the about, for these kids. And she basically shuddered like, you were nine months old. She remembered it too. So, I was unusual. Uh, the presumption among traditional Catholics to little kids cannot believe, uh, generally speaking. They don't have the mental faculties. That being said, if they have salvation at all, the, the same principle with Cornelius, the centurion, would apply in Acts 10. So in Acts 10, for those of you who don't know, uh, the Apostle Peter comes to the, has come to the Gentiles. And before being baptized, uh, these Gentiles start speaking tongues and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, even extra sacramentally. Peter then responds, quote, Then Peter answered, Can any man forbid water, i.e. baptism, that these should not be baptized who have received the Holy Ghost as well as we. Acts 10, 47. If infants have received the same salvation as adult believers in faith, why then should they be denied the water baptism? Same salvation. Why not the same water? If we're going to be honest, because and based on that principle, yes, it should apply. Furthermore, as we would... Furthermore... Further, furthermore, if you look at the Old Testament, and I point out in Hebrews three one, the new the Old Testament is the New Testament is superior to the Old Testament, and it was only a foreshadowing. What does the and so what does the Old Testament foreshadow about who and who is not welcome in a covenant relation with God? Because that is what we're talking about. We're talking about covenants, not with God. This is my blood and the new eternal covenant. That's what we're talking about when it comes to being Christian. Uh, not just outward personal expressions of faith. Uh, which, by the way, you don't need water for anyway. So, like, you could be, like, you could simply express your faith like a Muslim does. Profess, uh, and make a profession of faith. But what does the Bible say? What does the Old Testament say about who and who is not in, welcome into the Old Covenant with God? Leviticus 12.3. 12, and on the, and the eighth day, the infant shall be circumcised. In the Old Testament, infants were welcomed to a covenant relation with Jesus Christ. That is something that should be considered. So, and if the Old Testament is a foreshad foreshadowing of the New, what does that say about children entering into a covenant relation with God in the New Testament? It's baptism. And this is not just my opinion, as we'll see later. Actually, we'll go into right now. So, first of all, for the church fathers, as we know, in the, now as we see from the early church fathers, they had a very decided opinion on this matter, and that is, yes, infants should be baptized, and baptism of infants is 100% valid. So let's take a look. <coughs> Quote from the tradition of Apollos of Rome, 2nd century, 21.6. Uh, they should remove their clothing, and first, baptize the little ones. If they can speak for themselves, they should do so. If not, their parents or relatives shall speak for them. So we're talking about infants who have not attained the use of speech yet. Being baptized. Matter-of-factly. Then baptize the men, and last of all, the women. 
etc., etc. So this is from the tradition of politics of Rome. Yes, talk about infant baptism. He is not. This is not the only one. Since the period of Carthage, Epistle 58 on baptism. Quote, But in respect to the case of the infants, which you say ought not to be baptized within the second or third day after their birth, and that the law of the ancient circumcision should be regarded. So here we are seeing that there is a notion of equating, even if people want to delay baptism, uh, baptism with um, with circumcision, with the old covenant. Children, even they think that it should be, um, that children are welcome. And the law of ancient circumcision should be regarded, so that you think that, that one who is just born should not be baptized and sanctified within the eighth day, we all thought very differently in our council. For in this course, which you thought was to be taken, no one agreed. But we all rather judge that the mercy and grace of God is to be refused, is not to refuse to any one born of man. For as the Lord says in his gospel, Son of man has not come to destroy men's lives, but, but to save, but to save them. As far as we can, we must strive at that, if possible, no soul be lost. And what is wanting to him, who has once been formed in the womb by the hand of God, to us indeed, and to our eyes, according to the worldly course of days, they who are born appear to receive an increase. But whatever things are made by God are completed by the majesty and work of God their maker, St. Cyprian of Carthage. <coughs> Even in his context, the people who are arguing for delay of baptism, they only want to delay it eight days. And that was because even they saw the biblical parallels between inter of the covenant relationship of baptism. This is the early church we're talking about. So yeah, and so just look at my notes here. Um, I, forgive me, I'm a um, still new YouTuber, relatively speaking. We know that the old law foreshadows the new in Hebrews 10, 1. And we know that the old law, that the new law is superior to a superior. Hebrews 8, 6. Yet, why then is, why there, but this, but it doesn't apply if you're a kid, apparently. Yes, the old law is superior. Yes, the, it was just, a, the old law was just a foreshadowing. Uh, but, a foreshadowing of the new. But, uh, except when infants are being entering into a covenant relation with God, and the old, and old new law is superior to the old, unless you're an infant, because you're not welcome into a um, covenant relationship with God, and yeah, let the little children come unto me. Uh, Matthew 19, 14, uh, except when it comes to baptism and that covenant relationship, and then you have to wait till you're 21. Biblically, no. Biblically, no. Biblically, no. I am actually currently only aware of only one church father who actually recommended delaying uh, the delay, delay of baptism until adulthood. That would be the church father Tertullian. I remember uh, reading an LDS Mormon apologetic work uh, arguing how the real, real church fathers supported uh, adult baptism only. Clearly, he, he, a, he was much a, a bit quite a bit later, and as we can see from other church fathers, he was the minority opinion. But let's actually look at what Tertullian actually had to say about that. And quote, so this is Tertullian on baptism, uh, chapter 18. This is what he says, and I quote, And so according to the circumstances and disposition and even age of each individual, the delay of baptism is preferable, principally, however, in the case of little children. For why is it necessary, if baptism itself is not so necessary, that the sponsors likewise should be thrust into danger, who both themselves, by reason of mortality, may fail to fulfill their promises, and may be disappointed by the fulfillment, development of an evil disposition, those for whom they stood. Okay, so first of all, fun fact, early church discipline, if you committed a grievous sin after baptism, it was years of penance. Just just a fact, you can look it up. It was years of penance to be remitted into the church, because they don't only do baptism really once. And... What you are seeing here from Tertullian's quote is not that bap infants don't understand and baptism would not be valid, but that the baptism that the infants would receive would lay on huge obligations upon them and upon their sponsors for baptism, which if not fulfilled would make would make them very 
would they be held to great account before the, before the throne of God? And they don't know their positions yet, and they want to be sure that they can live out their baptismal promises and the life expected of a baptized person properly before they take the plunge. That's what Tertullian is arguing. He's not arguing that the baptism of infants is invalid. Indeed, he says the lay of baptism is preferable, not that it is required. Now the baptisms done earlier are not are invalid. So even Tertullian here seems to think the baptism of infants is valid. Children are welcome to a covenant relationship with God. That was what was done in the Old Testament. As we can see in Leviticus 12.3. 12, if the New Test, if the Old Law foreshadows the New, Hebrews 10.1, then that does beg the question, what does the circumcision of even young infants foreshadow? If the New Law is superior to the Old, well, it's not that superior if you're a kid, because in the Old Covenant, you could have a covenant relationship with God, but apparently not in the New. And if you said, oh yeah, they can believe at a young age, they can be saved anyway, then why not baptize them anyway? Why are we delaying? Because that's the whole pretext of not baptizing infants is that they are too young to believe for themselves. If they are saved, who can deny them water? God bless. Have a great day. And please check down below. Uh, check down below. Um, check out the SSPX website. I always recommend them. If you want to learn more about the early church and traditional Catholicism and the Catholic faith as it was believed even 2,000 years ago. The traditional Catholic faith is the faith of the early church. Never been broken, never been destroyed, never been lost, never will be. But yeah, check it out. Have a great day. And God bless.